Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. Before we get started, I wanted to make a disclaimer for those of you who happen upon the channel because you're interested in this camera. This is a Saltwater Aquarium YouTube channel. I am not going to demonstrate how to use this camera for recording or for security surveillance, but if you're interested in what we do in the saltwater world for caring for corals and fish, then I encourage you to stick around. Otherwise, for those of you who are new to the channel, please show your love by hitting that subscription button. Don't forget to show your appreciation for this video by hitting that like button. And also follow me on Instagram where I post almost every single day. The link to my Instagram page is down below in the description. So after banging my head over what camera I should use to monitor my tank, I finally decided with the help of those on Instagram. In today's video, I'm going to set up the Wise Cam Pan camera to monitor my aquarium while I'm away on vacation. I did put out a video on how to prepare an aquarium before leaving for an extended vacation. The link to that video will be down below in the description. I chose to go with the Wise Cam Pan camera for a number of reasons which we will cover in this video. While I go over the majority of its features, keep in mind, as of this video, you can purchase this camera for $40 on Amazon. Let's see what you get in the box when you buy one of these. A six foot long micro USB power supply, you can purchase longer cords if needed. A USB wall plug, a getting started guide, and of course, the camera itself. After removing the camera from its box, I went ahead and started to immediately remove the plastic protector that's on the camera's lens. These things were on there pretty good. As you can see, I am having some trouble removing it. The camera has a good quality feel to it with some decent weight behind it. The case is plastic, but it doesn't have that cheap plastic feel to it. The back of the camera has a USB plug to allow you to daisy chain power supply from one camera to the next. I think this is pretty awesome because you only need one camera to be plugged into a power outlet and the rest can be daisy chained together. The disc shaped rotational stand is where you would plug in the micro USB power supply and the other end of the cord is where you would plug in the USB wall plug or into the back of another camera. The bottom of the camera is where you'll find the micro SD card slot which is optional. To its left is the setup button which we'll be covering in a minute. The bottom of the camera stand is equipped with rubber for better grip which I thought was a nice touch. At the center of the bottom of the camera stand is a thread to fit any standard tripod. I think the design of these cameras is great so far. Now the first thing we're going to do to set this camera up is to go to your phone, open it up, and go to either Google Play Store or the Apple Store and download the Wise app. Once you've downloaded the app, you're going to need to create an account. I've already gone ahead and done this and created my own account and loaded up two of a total of four cameras that I'll be using for my application. I know, a little bit of an overkill. Next, you'll want to plug in the camera and power it up. Plug in the micro USB in the back of the stand and the other end into the USB wall adapter. The little light on the front of the camera will be a solid yellow. The camera will then go through a calibration process by turning left, then right, then the camera lens, uh, lens will move up and down. So in my case, I was adding a third camera to the app. You can see how easy it is to do. I just went to the added product and then I went and selected the wise cam pan. Here it's telling you to remove the protective plastic from the camera's lens. Another important point, this camera will only work on 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signal, not 5.0. Now flip the camera upside down towards you and press down on that setup button. You'll hear a voice, and <laughs> no, it's not the typical voice that I normally hear in my head, but rather it's a pleasant voice saying, ready to connect. Next, go to your app and search the newly connected camera. You should see a QR code pop up on your phone's screen. While your phone is displaying the QR code, hold it in front of your camera, the one that you wish to connect to the Wi-Fi. Hold your QR code approximately six inches in front of your camera's lens. When your Wise Cam reads the QR code off of your phone screen, you'll hear a voice saying QR code scanned, please wait. Within the next 15 seconds, you should then hear the camera say setup completed. Now you can go back to your app's home screen and open the newly connected camera. Mine were all prompted to do a new update. After updating your camera, go back to your home screen. From here, you can rename your camera. Tap on the camera you'd like to rename. Once you've opened the camera, tap on the gears icon. Here you can easily rename your camera to whatever you'd like. If you have more than one camera, I suggest that you place the name of the camera on the camera itself. I used a marker because I was too lazy to find my labeler. Having the cameras labeled comes in handy when you're pulling them out of storage to set them up again for your next vacation. 
By the way, I pulled mine out of storage after a few months of being unplugged and unused. Once I plugged them in, they all found the Wi-Fi and I was immediately able to see the video on my phone's app. And compared to my previous cameras, these cameras here are absolutely hassle-free. They were pulled out of storage, plugged in, and they found the Wi-Fi right away. Unlike my previous cameras, I would actually have to go through the port forwarding process, which was a big pain in the butt. The previous cameras that I had were the FOSS cam cameras. For whatever reason, after a few days of having those run, they would stop working. They would only start working again if I unplugged them and then plugged them back in. Well, I didn't realize this when I first got the FOSCAM cameras, so I ended up going dark until my tank sitter was able to come over to reboot the FOSCAM cameras. So as a result of that experience, I now just plug in the WISE cameras into my Apex controller. I renamed one of the outlets so that I can reboot all the cameras at the same time by simply sliding the slider to the off position, then back on. But it is worth mentioning that I have yet to reboot these cameras because they've lost Wi-Fi connection, unlike my previous experience with the other cameras. There's a bunch of features that I love about these cameras, but one of them is the ability to daisy chain power from one camera to another. I only need to use one outlet to power up all these cameras. Since my tank is only four feet long, the six foot power cables are plenty long enough. In order to have enough juice to power up all three cameras with the use of just one outlet, you'll need to make sure that the USB wall plug is capable of powering up multiple cameras. The USB wall mounts supplied with the Wise Cam pan are powerful enough to accomplish this task. However, it is my understanding that the smaller brother to the Wise Cam pan is supplied with a USB wall plug that will not power up more than one camera. And for those of you who are wondering, these cameras do need to be plugged in for them to work. They do not run off of batteries. Now that everything is up and running, let's take a look at how these cameras work. The first thing I want to show you is the pan and tilt mode. I was really surprised at the responsiveness of these cameras. I would say I have average strength Wi-Fi connection, but you can see that there is hardly any lag time from when I press the command to have the camera pan left or right, and the response is darn near immediate. The same goes with response time for the tilting of the camera's lens. As soon as I press the up or down button, is as fast as the camera will respond to the tilting up or down. Very impressive to say the least. Now I don't think the camera's lens technically has the ability to zoom, but what it does have might be even better. You're able to pinch and expand the video on your screen. Once you've expanded the screen, you're able to scroll left, right, up or down to see everything zoomed in. I think the ability to zoom in by pinching the screen is going to come in really handy when you want to take a close look at anything in particular in your tank. You will need to squeeze the screen shut to have the camera resume its normal operation. Now under normal operation, the camera's night mode is actually pretty good, especially for this camera's price point. The biggest drawback to night mode is if the room is pitch dark, then the video becomes nearly useless. Unfortunately, all you'll see is a reflection off of the glass from the camera's six IR LED lights. A way to avoid the reflection from the IR lights is by leaving on a light in the room that is bright enough to prevent the IRs from triggering in the first place. Leaving a light on makes it look like someone's home anyhow so it can pull double duty. Now let's take a listen to the two-way communication quality on these cameras. Alright, so now I have my wife over by the camera and I'm going to try to do two-way communication using my phone and her using the camera upstairs. Hi babe, can you hear me? I sure can. Wow, the audio sounds really good on my end. How about yours? It's really good. Okay, so there's about a four second delay because when I ask the question, there is that delay in the response. So know that maybe there's about a four second delay, perhaps in what you're also seeing on your video uh, remotely. Okay, my wife and I have now switched places. She's down in the car speaking to me on the phone and I'm upstairs uh, gonna have a conversation with her through the wise camera hi on you there I am here how do I sound it's so clear. okay we're still experiencing about a four second delay Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your help. Okay, so there you have it. 
in my opinion, I think the audio is a lot crisp and clearer coming out of the phone than the audio coming out of the camera. The camera was a little bit crackly, um, and again, that four to five second delay can really hamper communication efforts when you're talking to a tank sitter and trying to give them instructions on what to do next. You still have that visual aid, so maybe a cell phone, a phone call would be better for communication purposes. Now, as far as the delay on the video portion of this, I'm not seeing it. I, to me, it looks like it's real time video wise. It's just that part of the camera where it's audio that has a delay. I mentioned that the audio has about a four second delay and also mentioned that the video might also be delayed. Assuming you have decent Wi-Fi or cell phone reception on your phone, the video portion of the feed is actually near real time. So while there is a delay in the audio, I don't really see the delay in the video. Next, I'm going to demonstrate placing these cameras onto a tripod. Most of our aquariums sit up on top of some sort of counter or aquarium stand. So a tripod is an excellent mounting solution that will not interfere with the camera panning left or right. Additionally, you can adjust the height of the tripod to meet your needs. And as you can see, the process is straightforward. Simply take the underside of the camera and screw it down onto the tripod to secure it. On occasion, I have experienced a slow connection to my camera system. In the short amount of time that I've been using these cameras, I'd say the connection issue occurs approximately 5% of the time. So what do you guys think? Is this camera worthy? What are your preferred brands to use and what ways do you monitor your aquarium? Leave your comments down below and share your experiences with the community. So that'll do it for this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.